Hello, this is Andrew Robbins with CO2 Meter, and today we're going to go through an exciting new piece of software we have available called DAS, which is for controlling your sensors and collecting real-time and log data. So, to start things off, we're going to show you how to install DAS and do some basic data collection using our sensors. So first, open up your web browser and navigate to CO2Meter.com. Click on the Downloads tab on the main page and you'll be on our Downloads page. Click Install Now to download a small executable clicking save or the appropriate button in your browser to save this file to your downloads folder. For that just simply launch the setup file, click run and our software automatically install. Now keep in mind that you will need .NET 3.5 Service Pack 1 and you will need a computer running Windows XP Service Pack 3 or greater. These are basic requirements and um, unfortunately there are no workarounds at this time. So. With that in mind, we'll go ahead and click install this next dialog and it will download the package and automatically install it. Now we're using a click once deployment here, so the really nice thing about that is that your piece of software will automatically update as we create new bug fixes and features for it. So you'll never have to worry about going to our download page to download the latest greatest. You'll be uh, prompted every time you open the um, application if there is an update to download and install it. So it downloads pretty quickly as long as you're using a broadband connection and um, when it's done the application will actually automatically launch. Alright, and as you can see the application did launch automatically. It, um, this is what the default screen looks like. and. Um, what it does is it actually pops up this window behind sometimes where it finds sensors and it will ask you um, if you have some connected to give them a default alias. So we'll just leave the default names in this case because we really don't have a preference as to what we call these sensors. So that's how you install it and of course it found another data log drive attached to my computer right now. So it found uh, two sensors connected to my computer. Now, this application did launch instantaneously, but it also is in your start menu. So if we go ahead and close it here, it'll take just a second, we will find it in Start, All Programs, and you will find a new folder called CO2Meter. It'll be in DAS Software and DAS. So if we want to launch it again, we just click that right there. If you saw there, it checked for updates, and the uh, main interface window launches. Very cool, very easy. Alright, now that we have DAS installed, I'm going to show you some basic menus and tools to get you started with this piece of software. Now, if we look here, we have a couple options that are menu. The um, main ones that are going to be used most often are probably this open project menu right here. This guy right here allows you to open previous capture logs, which um, they do follow a standard naming convention, although you can certainly choose to name these um, whenever you'd like. So, once we save a file, I'll show you how this works and how you can open one again. Right now what we'll do though is we'll take a sensor we have connected to our computer. In this case it's a um, GSS branded uh, CO2 sensor development kit. And we're going to go ahead and collect some data from it in real time. In DAS there are two basic ways to collect data. You can download logs from a sensor or you can actually collect the data in real time from the sensor. Now um, some of our products like the um, ELG BLG K33 sensors and um, our AQ500 data logging platform both support log downloading but um, the majority of our products will actually be real-time only captures, just like this GSS sensor. This is also true for our K30 probe and um, pretty much the K30, K33 ICB, many of our sensors. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click this sensor and we're going to click this button right here called Collect Real-Time. Now in this window, it'll show us all the different interfaces exposed from this sensor. We have um, two different CO2 measurements here. One is um, what's called a fast response, which is basically an unfiltered signal. This is um, documented in the GSS documentation, and we're going to go ahead and grab that one right now. So in this dialog, you check the sensors you want to capture. And it shows you the uh, maximum capture interval, which in this case is one second. And we're going to go ahead and select one second here. Then we're going to go ahead and give this log a name. We're going to call this test log one. So with all that filled out, we go ahead and click the start button. It asks us to save this file. We're going to go ahead and stick with the default name here. And we do want to create it. And we're off logging. Now from this screen, you notice that um, we do have a graph right here that automatically updates. We have a nice little data grid view right here. 
and basically we're capturing data for as long as we want. The software will handle um, around 10,000 to 30,000 points pretty comfortably depending on your um, computer, so you really have quite a few points of data to work with. You're approaching the limits of spreadsheet programs like Excel at the very least. So, we'll let this capture for a couple seconds longer just so we have some good data. Okay, I think that's just about enough capturing. Let's go ahead and stop that. Now, if you notice here, we can expand these, this new panel here on the left and see some additional information about our capture. The software by default automatically saves the start date and the end date of the capture, the interval, and the different series in that capture, including mean, count, min, and max data. It also stores the device serial number for identification later. So this is what a project looks like when we have it open. We can go ahead and um, using this tool right here, the cursor tool, when we have selected, we can drag our cursor across the graph here and actually um, scroll through the data grid up above to see different points and um, look at points of interest. So that's um, a very handy feature to have when you're looking to um, isolate certain occurrences. We can grab the move tool right here and look around the graph and refocus the uh, scroll wheel right now actually perform zooming functionality which is useful when you have large numbers of data points that might not comfortably display on one screen. And we have a zoom box tool where we can go ahead and drag a um, window around the graph and zoom if we want to. To um, undo all the zooming and whatnot, we click this button right here. It's called Auto Scale, which puts us back in a default view. So that's how to um, handle n navigating the graph. Next thing we probably want to do is customize these axes. So to do that, we grab our cursor tool. We can uh, go ahead and double click on this guy right here and give it a new name. Let's say we wanted to call this CO2 in Basement Level 1. Click Done and it goes ahead and refreshes that access name and we can also do the same for the um, access over here just call it atmospheric CO2 in parts per million and we'll go ahead and we can set a manual scale if we wanted to although um, I won't for this demonstration we can also move it to the right hand side if we wanted if we have more than one series but we won't bother with that either let's say we wanted to change the color to a nice neon green Overall, very easy to customize the graph. This allows you to um, basically, you know, do whatever you need to do with this graph, put it in your company colors, or etc. We'll go ahead and uh, save this log file. Now, from here, we have a couple things we can do with the log. In this menu, we can um, save the graph as an image, which um, is useful if you wanted to include this graph in, one, in a report of some sort. You can um, choose a pixel size, width, and height. We can also export the data to a spreadsheet if we wanted to create a CSV file. It will um, certainly allow us to do that and save it on our desktop or wherever out. And that um, works pretty good. We can also um, print it in the entire view graph or data series. It does a um, HTML based render print where you can um, customize the header and footer even if you so chose to. So that's um, pretty decent functionality. And that is pretty much all there is to real-time capture. Next I'm going to show you how to download logs from one of your devices. In this case I have a K33 BLG data logger connected up to my computer that has been taking data for the past day or two at an interval of 15 seconds. So when you attach this device it will automatically detect and what it will do is in the background it will download the log files for you. So if you click on the sensor when you initially connect it you'll actually see a little progress bar here creep across the screen as it downloads the logs. In this case though we've waited a couple minutes and that process has fully completed. You notice that we have a new button here that is not grayed out called manage logs. I'll go ahead and click that and it brings up a new dialog. This window will show you all the logs currently stored on your sensor. In this case um, I did not sync the time before sorting this log but it does have 367 points in it. And you can see the start and start date and time and all that good information. So. We have a um, clear button here which will delete all the logs on your sensor without saving and a download selected and clear. Unfortunately you cannot download specific logs while leaving others intact on the sensor due to the nature of the logging protocol. So let's go ahead and grab this one log and click download selected and clear. 
What the software did just now is it saved that log out to the default log directory with the name of the sensor and the date time information. So if we go to our open button, look in our DAS logs directory by default, we sort by date modified, we'll see that this is the log we just downloaded. The serial number matches up and so does the start time. We can go ahead and open that. Now as you can see this log has three different series of data on it. It has CO2, relative humidity, and temperature. Pretty cool. And go ahead and move this axis over here. And you can see you can just customize this however which way you need it to be customized. We'll grab a uh, stale blue. It's a cool color. And you can see that it loaded up the three series with information including maximum, minimum, and mean on the left hand side and it also stored the data logger information. So that's how you manage your logs. And if you had more than one log, it would put them all inside this directory again, sorted by serial number and start date. And you can rename these files whatever you wish. We recommend that you stick with the st standard naming convention, but you're of course free to name these files whichever way you see fit. For example, we can take one, call it basement log three, and we'll go ahead and open that and you can see it loads up just fine. It has a nice title preserved little graph. This is actually a log we created in the uh, previous tutorial. So that just about concludes everything I can show you about this piece of software right now. We're um, pretty excited about it and hope to uh, continue creating new features and supporting new products. If you have any comments or suggestions, please email me at andrew at, andrew at co2meter.com. Thank you and have a great day.